Hey, what's going on, everybody? Uh, we're on the Army Channel today, and we're answering all the Patreon questions for July. Uh, we like to do this so that everybody gets their questions answered. I got Tom here in the house, which what's makes up, things... Everybody? What's up? What's up? Which there makes things uh, interesting. The first question had to do with sulcata tortoises. What's it about there, buddy? So, uh, Mike Long asks, I have baby sulcatas in the substrate I'm using as reptobark mixed with organic topsoil. I'm getting these small black beetles in it. Uh, and I change the substrate, they come right back. Okay. Would it be safe to put a toad in the in the enclosure to keep the bugs under control, or what would you suggest? Well, um, interesting theory. I don't know about keeping the bugs under control. You may want to try the toad, as long as the toad's not big enough to hurt the uh, baby tortoises. Now, I also use a little bit of repti bark and potting soil here. I even use some, um, some dried out uh, eco chips as well. Um, you can see it's dry on top, but if you were to dig down, you do get to a moist layer and that's good for the baby tortoises. They really enjoy to burrow into that. Kind of helps them out. We have some baby sulcatas right now and they're soaking and drinking and just going about their day here in these little zoom med tortoise enclosures. Um, every once in a while I would get small white bugs. I really don't know what the name of the bugs are, but after a while they became so plentiful it's a little bit annoying. Uh, these guys, I, I, I do the same thing as you. I would just clean out the enclosure um, and then start over again. Um, you know, there's really, that's an experiment that you may want to try. I mean, if you want to go ahead and see if that'll eat and keep down the beetles, go for it. Like I said, make sure it's not a wild caught toad or something that can potentially harm the babies. Um, and then this way, you know, you're okay. Uh, so that could be an interesting uh, solution. However, depending on the species of toad, toads, well, they don't really live in a semi-desert environment unless you get a desert toad. So, and even if you got a desert toad, you're gonna need some kind of uh, humid area for it to hide uh, so it doesn't desiccate or dry out. So that might be a problem having an amphibian coexisting with a desert type reptile. Uh, you may just wanna clean out the enclosure uh, and see where you're getting your repti bark from. Maybe that potting soil's got something in it. Uh, so switch brands and see if there's more of a uh, sterile type that you can use. Nothing comes to mind for me. I always go to Home Depot, just get organic potting soil, mix it in with the repti bark. Uh, so that's my best answer for you there, buddy. Uh, what's the next question? Where are we going in the camp? All right, well, the next question, I don't think we're going to answer. I think I'll answer this oh. for you. Uh, Magnus Lond asks, Matamata care clip tips. I want Matamata care tips. All right. Listen, well, dude, we will do it. It's coming soon. That's another video. It's a full video, and we promise we'll make it for you. We've got a great Matamata. We'll get him out of the pond for well, you. It's going to take a long time to find him. Yeah, He's so, the most cryptic of our kids. Yeah, that's uh, going to, be have to have to be for another day. But just so you know, we did see your request, and it's coming. All right, okay, good deal. Other one. What yeah. do you feed Slinky on a regular basis? Well, let's go back over here. So, <laughs> um, so Slinky gets the croc biscuits, which is the same thing that you've seen Kyle feed the crocodilian diet. It's Missouri crocodile diet. They come in a small pellet and a large pellet. We feed it, well, a large biscuit. We feed the large biscuits to Slinky. I also feed him fish on a regular basis and I feed him frozen thawed rats. We have some rats thawing out right now because we're gonna do a whole feeding video in a little bit. There are the rats thawing out right there. Uh, so Slinky's gonna get a couple of rats today. Uh, but primarily it's, it's going to be, let's go and say hello Slinks. It's uh, going to be the pellets or biscuits rather, crock biscuits. It's also gonna be eggs, chicken from time to time, fish and rodents. Come here, pretty much a carnivore's diet. There he is, the handsome man, good old Slinks, hanging out, enjoying the beautiful South Florida day we have going on today. Awesome. Yeah, cool. All right, All right. next one. We're in a good spot for the next question. Are we? Well, kind of, we're close by. Uh, I've res oh, this comes from Joe. Oh, I'm sorry, the last one was by Greg Touche, so thanks, oh, Greg. Thanks, Greg. This one comes from Joe O. I've responsibly raised a pair of sulcatas for 20 years. I'm 60 years old now. What do I do with them when the time comes? Ah, yeah, well, we answered one of these questions prior. Uh, it was a woman who actually asked it. Uh, sulcatas are over there, and um, let's go visit them. It's a little wet because I've been draining things. Um, so, listen, the plan is, if I were you, I would take on a mentor. I would become a mentor to someone younger who really enjoys these animals. Uh, join a tortoise uh, club, uh, conservation organization, maybe a local wildlife refuge, and work with some of the younger people there who are interested in turtles and tortoises, and then you can gift them, leave them in your will. Uh, here's some of mine. 
that's something that I'm going to be doing. Kyle and I are actually building our own, uh, you know, sanctuary for these animals. So at some point, everything I own will live over there. And hopefully the sanctuary lives on long after I'm gone and Kyle's gone and becomes an institution that will always exist because people who love reptiles will donate, help out and work there. That's my best answer for you, buddy. I would just take on an apprentice. Sounds like good advice to me. All right. All right, Kareem asks. What's I have up, a Kareem? pond in the UK and keep turtles outside all year round. I've recently rescued a spiny soft shell and was wondering, can they hibernate? Yeah, if the spiny soft shell is from an area of the um, range where that animal does hibernate in, hibernate in nature, then yes, spiny soft shells can be found into New Jersey, which gets very cold here in the States. They get, they can even, if I'm not incorrect, I, guys don't hold me to this. I do believe they can reach as far as Maine in certain spots. So uh, the spiny softshell turtle is definitely a wide ranging uh, softshell species and can hibernate. Question answered. Very good. All right. Oh, uh, what do we got here? Sherry Johnson. What is the best turtle to get a child? Whew. One that you will be able to uh, help maintain because a child is not going to be responsible enough at an early age. Uh, I'd recommend waiting until a child is at least eight or nine before you get at a pet turtle because there were a lot of the problems with baby turtles in the past and why they were kind of demonized as carrying salmonella is children weren't responsible enough to care for them. They had improper means of habitat or enclosure. Then the children would want to play with the turtle all the time. They pick it up, put it in their mouth, they get sick because the animal had been living in its own filth. Now, to answer your question, I'd say with something that's smaller. I actually like tortoises because you don't really have to deal with water. I love elongated tortoises. Elongated tortoises stay small. That's full size of an elongated tortoise. And uh, their babies are just so cute. They're hardy. They can survive in really humid, uh, cool environments because they are found over a wide range of Southeast Asia, all the way from India down into Sulawesi, uh, which just far down there. Um, so basically, that would be my recommendation. Any of the smaller tortoise species, I feel, are more rewarding, they're easier to care for, and uh, they're often seen. You know, when you get a baby turtle, turtles hide, they're in the water. Then if you're a parent and you have to take care of this, why add to your workload by having to make sure the filters are clean and the water is clean and then the food and the UVB lights, which of course they need as well. But what I mean is um, you can get a $10 turtle and spend $200 on the enclosure. Uh, with the tortoises, it's a little bit flipped. You might spend $200 on a baby tortoise, but then the upkeep and the enclosures are so much easier. So um, I would recommend a tortoise uh, because they're also vegetarians, so they're easier to care for and it's easier to find food at your local supermarket uh, that can help them as well. Plus growing food. Plenty of videos on the main channel. You want to check that out. What was her name? Sherry Johnson. Thanks, Shout out Sherry. to all the Johnsons. Yeah. I know there's a bunch of Johnson they're, kids and they're big fans. Thank you, they're Johnson children. And I uh, hope that answered your question. Cool. All right, next one. Uh oh, I gotta unfold yep. my fold paper. It, fold here it, dude. We're just thing. hanging out here, no problem. Yeah, we're, we're raw. We're raw right here. here. We're raw on the right. army channel. Uh, Leanne Rodmeyer. We know Leanne. Hey, Leanne. Hi, Kenan. I just received the hatchling Indian star tortoise in March. I built a vivarium for it and have lots of fungus gnats in the vivarium. Do you have any ways of naturally getting rid of them? I've hmm. put yellow sticky tabs in and also nematodes. Am I saying that right? Yeah. But I still have them. Any suggestions? Mm, well, uh, you know, uh, similar to what you did is I would get no pest strips, open up the plastic uh, cage that the strip was in, and I would then clip them uh, into smaller squares uh, to help control um, gnats in my incubator. Um, the sticky tape, all those things, this is just kind of part of the... Um, the downfall sometimes of UV using natural substrates and so on. We answered that question earlier, so it's a very similar question. Um, I don't like to use harsh, harsh chemicals near my animals. Um, make sure you're removing food quickly because as we know, when you get uh, different vegetation, fruits, when you're feeding uh, herbivores, you can get the fruit flies pretty easy, these gnats, the bugs, the flies, uh, and that's what you'd want to do, so cool. All right, you ready for next question? Uh, yes, I am. All right, let's see. What's the next question here? I don't know. You got them. Uh, this one comes from Nicole Irwin. Okay. So it's not a question, but I had a comment on the name for your blackhead python. There was an instance by the pond he was wrapped around you, and all I thought was Indiana Jones. Your hat, of course, gave me the idea. Why not name him Indy or IJ for Indiana's initials or just Indiana? Laugh huh. out loud. 
keep up the great work. We cannot wait till the conservation opens. Oh, uh, well, thank you so much. And I can't wait till he actually hits this electric fence because he's getting oh, real close to it. I am not touching um, that thing. Yeah, yeah, just <laughs> stay away from it because that will be one shocking video. But uh, bump. Uh, anyway, puns aside, thank you very much for the comments. Uh, uh, it's always fun when you think you're Indiana Jones. You know, obviously, you know, I love hats that are reminiscent of Indy and uh, love the movies. Uh, he actually looks like a whip with that black head being a handle. So maybe we'll call him uh, uh, Whip It. Whip It Good from uh, Devo. That's an old school, new age band uh, that you may want to Google. Um, but anyway, thanks for your comment. Thanks for your support. And we can't wait to get the sanctuary open either. Awesome. Next one. This comes from Chuck Horn. I'm actually going to be a part of the answer on this. When he asked, it's a double question. Okay. First, Chuck Horn asks, what, Hey, Kenan, what is the coolest nighttime temperature you would recommend for a tropical slash subtropical species to be allowed to experience outdoors, assuming temps get reasonably warm, 70s plus during the day. That's gonna vary species to species because some animals are a little bit more susceptible to catching cold than others. Some are just more delicate. Uh, if we're talking tortoises, here all the tortoises I have, I rarely let those animals dip below 60 degrees. Watch yourself there. Uh, between b below 60 degrees. The sulcatas, though, are a little bit tougher. Uh, they're from a desert environment or a semi-desert environment. As we know, it gets real cold in the deserts at night, uh, sometimes down into the 50s. Now, I've had them go into the 50s if I had a failure on some of my uh, heaters. But as long as they're dry and it does warm up into the high 70s, they're okay. I wouldn't let that go uh, through many successive nights. So let's say safe rule of thumb 65 degrees is the coldest I'd go uh, you know for a, a um, subtropical or tropical species well tropical species 65 subtropical species like an animal from Florida they can kind of take a little cooler because we get into the freezing temps a few times a winter uh, here in South Florida so they're just tougher these are the snow leopard tortoises and they're floating around I don't like to keep these guys cold at all so I bring them in the house when it gets below 65 degrees and certainly if it's going to be below 65 with a, a damp rain that could be lethal for any species of tortoise. Where are those guys hiding right now? Uh, it's warm right now so they're probably in their uh, houses. Let's see. Probably in the house. Yep. Go ahead and peek in there. You can see just a quick little sun shelter I made for them the other day. They're in there. It's dark. Yep. Well, Kate wasn't happy that the grass was so long in here, so I had to <laughs> cut it. She keeps me on my toes. All right. So the second unrelated, uh, well, just another question from Chuck. Oh, what's up? Which Chuck? is something we've been thinking about already. So Chuck yeah, says, yeah. Uh, hey, on an unrelated note regarding the army, would you guys considering, would you ever consider providing a link to uploaders YouTube channels if they have one? I understand if you have business reasons not to. Just thought I'd ask. Keep up the great work and thanks. And I can answer that one. And say, Tom's got this one, guys. Chuck, we've been thinking about that one, and I think it's an awesome idea. And as of this very instant, yes, you can do it. We've been thinking about it, uh, and we're now offering a new level right now on Patreon with, uh, you know, we're offering a limited number of YouTube direct links. Um, they'll be prominently in the description every feature episode every tuesday every week on camp cannon so uh that means you know you'll be linked your channel will be linked if you subscribe at that level on patreon so go on there check it out if you want to do it do it and uh and there you go you're uh, you're even closer part of the family now we'll link right to your channel and help get the people who know what they're doing uh get get some right. more views. As, as a caveat though i'm going to be checking out these channels and make sure that yeah. there's good information and that the uh animals look like they're in good shape we're not to just post anybody up there you yes. got to be tip top because we don't want to promote anything that's not promoting the safe handling safe husbandry and proper conditions the animals should live in exactly so it's not for everybody but if you want to sub at that level on patreon We'll check you out, and uh, if you get the passing grade, you'll be linked every single Tuesday, every single week. So love the idea, and uh, go to Patreon, and it's there right now. We'll put a link in the description of this video, and you can check it out. All right, next. Rainy. We know Rainy. I know Rainy. Just curious, but do you own any reptiles with disabilities or need extra special care? Well, the only one that comes even close is my wild green iguana tiger who's got one claw on his right front leg and his partially regenerated tail. He was a wild animal that came to me. Um, but uh, no, I really don't. Everyone is uh, healthy. Now, the reason that I do it that way, I don't take on hard, hard luck cases because I have so many animals. I've got to, I, I like to have them be as self-sufficient as they can. 
makes things easier for me uh, and it's better for them. So I have large enclosures where they can graze. You know, of course, the ecosystem pond from Aquascape here, uh, all the animals are in good tip-top shape. Uh, every now and again, someone will try and give me an animal, but what happens is I usually contact my friends at Bush Wildlife or some of the people that I know that do reptile uh, outreach and, and they take those animals. Um, so it's just not easy for me to care for all these animals and then take on animals that I've got to really be doing uh, special care for. And the other thing is, every once in a while, I'll get one of my own animals that gets sick, and I have to really devote a lot of time uh, to make sure that animal gets healthy again. So I just can't uh, have too many special cases here. Very good. All right, we're getting close to the end here. Are we? A few more left. A lot of people that we know very well always talk. We, well, we that's talk the point of Patreon is that we get to know you guys. We really appreciate your support. And, you know, this is a way for us to, to support each other uh, because your guys' help on Patreon is really important. It keeps us going. It really does. Um, you know, people think you get rich on YouTube. That's just not the case. We're not just for trying everybody to stay anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're not, you know, that's because we're not tasing dead rats and other things like some other buddies of mine. <laughs> Not really buddies, but you know what I mean. All right, so Heather Burke asks, I want to take my two Herman sources from a controlled environment inside and put them on a porch since winter is over. What kind of steps should I take to make sure they are comfortable and not overwhelmed? Well, I mean, if you're building a tortoise table on the porch, just go ahead and make sure it has shelter, water, proper substrate, a good place where it's going to get good lighting uh, throughout the day places they can get out of the, the, the sun um, and just meets all their environmental needs. They won't be overwhelmed. They'll probably soak up the sun, grow bigger. And uh, if you could see a smile on their face, I'm sure they'd have one if they didn't have the permanently uh, beaked face of the tortoise. The Ramtharica. That's another fancy word for beak. All right, second from the final question. Okay. Hi, I love your show. This is from Carly Hawkins. Okay, Carly. Uh, I've always wanted a tortoise. I live in London in the UK. As many people know, it's not warm here. My question is, which breed of tortoise would cope well in our climate, if any? Thank you for the great videos. Well, I would definitely steer you towards some of your European species, the testudo species from Southern Europe. We're talking the uh, Greek tortoise, the Hermann's tortoise, marginated tortoise. Um, those guys would just be better suited for you because Number one, they're not too far out of their range. Number two, they're small enough that you can bring out on nice warm days because you do get an odd sunny day in the summer there in good old jolly England. And, um, you know, if you don't have those sunny days, whatever habitat that you can provide for them indoors, it's going to be easier for you to maintain, better suited for their needs uh, since they don't grow so big, and overall make your experience uh, and the animal's experience more enjoyable uh, throughout their lives and your life. So I would recommend Herman's Greek or Marginated Tortoise for you. Cool. Final question, Ron okay. Parker. Am I lazy for sitting down? No, man, we're answering a lot of questions yeah, here. We're, we're, we've been shooting for 20 minutes. We have? Yeah. Oh, okay, let's right. wrap this up for or crying something out Something like that, anyway. Okay. All right, do you have any plant recommendations that can be added to indoor tortoise enclosures for it to browse on like herbs, or a patch of grass. I live in a condo and lack access to a garden. I'm looking for stuff I can get from hardware stores. Thank you, Ron Parker. Ron, good question. You might have stumped me on the final one. I am so lucky that I live down here in Florida. Actually, it's not luck. I just hightailed it and moved down here with all this in my mind. Um, I can grow things like elephant ear. I can grow things like hibiscus. Different weeds pop up that the tortoises like. Um, what you can try and do, uh, there was a good resource. Where was it? Sometimes you don't know all the answers, but you can find them. I'm well, going to find the resources. Have something to ask about. Yeah, go ahead and ask away. I'm going to okay, get Okay, so, I mean, I know certain herbs, if you put them in a window like basil, uh, they grow very easily, very quickly. You know, what, are there herbs like that? that That's what I'm trying to find out. That's oh. the whole thing I'm trying to do. Right, you're fine. I'm just... I don't know everything. Just trying to help but I, No, I know you're trying <laughs> to there, There's a... Um, hold on. There's a good website. I'm going to find it. Uh, it's an older website, but the information's good. Um, basically, uh, they may have some some list of, of plants that you can grow indoors. Uh, okay, so I did a little sleuthing. The tortoise table.org.uk is a great source. I just looked at it. I've heard of these guys before. They've got an entire list uh, of plants from A to Z that you can grow and feed your tortoises. Some of those you'll be able to grow indoors. I'm not a botanist, nor am I much with a green thumb when it comes to indoor gardening. 
but there are plenty of websites and YouTube videos on how to indoor garden. You might want to check those out. But for a start, go to the tortoise table dot org dot uk to get started so thus concludes another successful edition of ask camp kennan here on the camp kennan army channel this is all the questions for july we'll have a whole new slew of questions for you come the end of august but uh well we're having fun thanks for your support on patreon uh thanks for the support on the main channel and the army channel here so guys keep on the liking and keep on subscribing and most importantly take care of your animals i'll see you all again soon say goodbye tom Goodbye, everybody. Later.